Good morning. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. I'm so excited you're here. I'm Leslie from Just Less Creations. I'm just so excited to show you this next um, this next cake pop tutorial. We're doing dinosaurs. I've done so many of them over the summer, and I'm excited to show you how to do it as well. Um, I've done pink ones and purple ones and blue ones and green ones and I think there was a couple yellow ones in there early in the summer so I went through my chocolate I know on the cake pop uh, event that I had a, the pink and purple ones up but we're actually going to do a green one because I have just a little bit of green left and it's at that perfect stage where you know your chocolate gets kind of um, a little bit gritty and I always hold on to that because, especially for around Halloween when you all have all those monsters and stuff but this chocolate here is perfect for these animals and creatures that are just a little bit on the scaly side or bumpy side or something along that line so I always hold on to this kind of chocolate for these special um, creatures so that's what we're going to do today we're going to start with the dinosaur so let's get started all right so the first thing we're going to do is roll out our dough. I'm just going to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to put pressure on my cake pop dough and roll it, and I'm just going to squish it, squish it, squish it, make sure there's no um, air bubbles in there that I can feel. And you'll feel when it comes together, and then I'm going to roll backwards with less pressure. It'll make that nice little round ball. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the snout. I don't want any sharp edges and then I'm gonna push back to create where his eyes will be oh I pushed a little too hard to see that I put a crack in it so I'm just gonna fix that smooth it together all right and then I'm just gonna round that off a little bit Now that crack's important. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, the crack was right here. And I pushed it together and I smoothed it so that you can't see that there was a crack there. However, I need to keep that in mind because when I put a cake pop in here later on and I spin it and I pull it back, um, it is displacing the cake pop dough. So if it's displacing and you already have a weak spot there, um, you it creates the potential for that um, cake pop dough to slide down the stick. So I just wanna bring that to your attention. So we will keep that in mind as we go ahead forward with this particular pop. Um, so if you, if, if you are doing cake pops and you are doing this and you actually create that crack or a crack um, you, you can't seem to get rid of the crack. It could be, one, your cake pop dough is too um, dry and it needs a little bit more binder. Or two, you have an air bubble in there that has the potential to, to expand that cake pop dough and displace it, creating um, like an aerated pocket inside your cake pop dough and it'll it'll slide down. So I just bring that to your attention so that you know, but I'm going to go ahead and continue with this cake pop. I'm just smooth it all out. Right again, I'm going to take the top of my bone tool and I'm going to make eye sockets. One socket, two sockets. Right, and then I'm going to roll it to its side. I'm going to push down in, create his mouth. And then I'm going to roll it over and do the same on this side. Push it down in nice and deep and roll it, flip it over. And then I'm just going to put his mouth together just a little bit. Now we're just going to put his nostrils in there. Like he's got a crooked mouth. If I look down on him, his eyes are clear over here. That's okay. He's the weird one in the bunch. All right, so I'm going to put his nostrils in. One here. 
one here. To smooth out the hard edges on it. All right, and let's go ahead and put a stick in this one. I just dip just a little bit. I'm good. Again, I'm going to put it at this 45 degree angle. I'm going to spin it until I feel it connect. And then I'm going to turn it back. Just look, add that little extra friction so I know it holds. And then I'm going to take that extra chocolate off the bottom. And then I'm going to take out all of my finger marks. I really squished his eyeball. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and set this over here to let it firm up. Last night, I actually um, went ahead and dipped two of them so I knew that it was firm. One thing about cake pops is whenever you are dipping your pops, and you got to let that chocolate set up enough on the inside of your pop so that when you start manhandling it, if you will, um, it'll be able to hold up to what you're about ready to do. So I went ahead and dipped these last night before I went to bed so that they would be firm enough on the inside that I can go ahead and do all the decorative stuff. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to dip it in chocolate and then we're going to add eyes and then we'll put that, um, these, uh, what are they called the confetti sequins on the top of his head. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pull my chocolate over here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna give our chocolate a nice stir. Make sure all that heat is evenly incorporated all the way around. All right, so whenever we make depressions in our chocolate, um, if we just dip it um, we're going to run risks of air bubbles in all those little divots. So usually, sometimes it depends on how many, how much divots, um, I will dip it and then I really go after it with my little palette knife. However, this one here, I'm going to pour it right down inside his mouth. So I, the, I know that there's no air bubbles there. I don't want air bubbles. We'll do it up here at his eyes. And then I'll just dip the rest of them now that I know that we don't have any air bubbles. And then I'm just going to tap it and let that run off. And I'm going to just keep that chocolate moving. I'll let gravity do its thing. Guys, have any questions? All right, now you can see how deep the depression was. And now that I put my chocolate in there, you can see it's really filled that area up. I'm actually going to take my palette knife here and just kind of pull some of that chocolate out that's been pulling in there. I need to create that space where I can put his teeth and create that dimension. So I'm just pulling just a little bit of that chocolate out of his mouth. And if there's any extra, yeah, they got a whole lot pulling in his nostrils, so we'll pull that out as well. Right, and then, oh, let's pull that extra off. Let it run off. Okay, now I'll just go ahead and tap it again. See, by doing that, there's an air bubble. By doing that, I create a dimension. And dimension is what adds character and separates you from other cake pop decorators. Do you remember the um, cake pop that I said we did this morning that um, cracked? Last night I had the same thing. And you can see where my cake pop stick is actually um, pushing, it displaced that that uh, cake pop dough. So that's perfect. But we're gonna just kind of hold on to it and we're gonna work with it. So I'm gonna take my eyeballs and, and just drop them into this wet chocolate. And we'll just keep an eye on that crack. 
And I'm just going to push it down into the little divots that we had there. And while I'm here, I'm just going to add another layer of chocolate here where those cracks are starting to form to try to salvage it. And it won't matter for the looks because they're dinosaurs, they're scaly, it'll just kind of add to his character. We are going to, while he is still kind of wet, we're gonna put that bridge along his eyebrow and I'm gonna do three of them right across the top. And I'm gonna use the chocolate It's already wet on there as my glue. One, two, three. I'm going to spin them around. And I'll do three on this side. One, two, three. Just make sure they're touching that chocolate. He slid. So there we go. First thing, don't laugh at my trays, guys. I've had these trays for 20 years, all right? Eventually the plastic breaks down and you lose them. <laughs> okay, so here where I put his mouth, I wanna create a real sense of depth in his nostrils. So it's that whole light and dark thing. So I have a little bit of luster dust, it's called forest green and just going to use a little bit but see that's too dark in comparison to my um, actual cake pop the chocolate candy melt so I'm going to use a little bit of lighter and mix the two and it'll be a nice happy color that I can use and all I'm going to do and it doesn't matter if it splatters on the rest of your chocolate he's a dinosaur so he's scaly so I'm just gonna take, and I'm just gonna tap it on the inside of where his teeth is at, and you can see right away it's starting to create that dimension. These little tick tricks like this set you apart from other cake pop makers that you can elevate your cake pop treats from $3 to five or $6, because now it's a piece of it's a it's it's artwork you've done artwork and it's so simple it just takes a few more minutes of time and then all of a sudden you become a master creator and people will they'll come to find you so there we go I just created a little dimension I'm gonna do that also in his nostrils all right so now we've just created a whole lot of depth perception <clears throat> by just adding a little bit of petal dust. All right, I'm just going to outline his nose. Now you'll notice that I do not have a piping tip in here, um, and, and that's okay. Again, it's a dinosaur. I don't have to be precise or pristine. Um, if you want the nice, solid, round line, feel free to put a tiny tip icing um, tip in there but I didn't I'm just gonna go with whatever comes out of the bag because each one then becomes different and gives them character so all in uh oh I got a hard piece of chocolate in there and that's probably another reason why I don't use a tip all right so there's one all right I did not like the way that comes out, but it's still hot, so I will alter it. I'm just smoothing it out a little bit on this side. All right, wipe that off. So that's it. Now right at the, the where it comes together, I'm gonna just add some dots because he's a dinosaur. So I'm gonna push it down and then pull up and it gives them that little spiky. You see that spiky on there? I don't know if you can see that spiky. All right, so I'm just gonna add some dots. Your gift, your talent, your passion 
Well, it will create the way, it will create favor for you and, and you know, people will find you. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little band of that chocolate on there and I'll finish them off. Okay, we'll put a couple more on here. So if you don't do it while it's wet, you can always do it this way. Just put some wet chocolate on there. Now this is uh, almond bark. I just melted a block of almond bark. I like using almond bark for teeth because it really, um, I don't know what it is about almond bark, but um, it's probably easier just to show you what I mean. So I'm gonna start all the way back here. I'm gonna use a paintbrush and I'm actually gonna really scoop a lot of chocolate on there. And I'm gonna do the top of the tooth first and then I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna pull. And it wants to come down just a little bit more. The more you pull it, the longer that tooth will get. So you guys can do this. Um, I know you guys can. Be creative today. Think outside the box. Try something new. You guys are here to learn and I'm here to encourage you that you can do this. Absolutely. So have a blessed Tuesday and I will see you in two weeks for our next tutorial. Today, won't you click the link to reserve your spot in my consultation schedule? Don't stress any longer. Let me help you get the breakthrough that you're looking for today.